10, verses 3 through 5, where it reads, for though we walk in the flesh, oh we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God yes. to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Strongholds like sickness, disease, sin, habit, bad habits, evil habits, bondage, poverty. The weapons of our warfare are supposed to bring deliverance yes. to these issues. All of them. Yes. Yes. All of them. Scripture goes on to say in verse 5, casting down imagination. Yes. Sometimes a lot of fears, a lot of our fears come from our imagination. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 You know, a lot of times church folk are fearful. Mm -hmm. And it ain't got nothing to do with reality. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Amen. A lot of times if we just calm down yeah. 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 and realize it ain't happened yet. Amen. And there ain't no guarantee that it will happen. So calm your little self down. Amen. How come you just can't be safe oh, yeah. in his arms? Yeah. I wish I could say that. So I got to say it again. Yeah. Why we can't just yeah. be safe Hallelujah. in his arms? But we cast down every imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God yeah. and bring everything into captivity Every thought to the obedience of Christ, which is the Word, yes. made flesh. Yes. Everything should be under yes. the authority of the Word of God. That's why I want to tell you today that everything yes. that's going on in your life should be under the authority of the Word of God. Amen. Um, look at your neighbor right quick and say, neighbor. Don't touch it, don't touch it, just look at it. Say, neighbor, this means war. This is about warfare. When you read the scripture, you can see this is about warfare. And this is taking a closer look at the authority of the word of God. Everything should be under submission to the word of God. Anything going on in your life, that's not submitted to what God's word says, then it's out of order. And it needs to be dealt with. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be spoken to. It needs to be told to get back in your place. And let me, let me, let me, just, let me just go on a little bit further so we can understand this. In John 1 and 12, 2 John 1 and 12, it says, but as many as received him, the word of God, to them gave he power to be the sons of God. Amen. You know what it means to be a son? Yes. Yes. If you are a son of anybody, then there is a certain level of authority you have based on who you are a son of. Yes. Now, if you are, the, you know, if you're a son of some folk, then that ain't don't mean that you ain't got no authority, because they ain't got no authority. <laughs> if your dad ain't got no authority, then you ain't gonna have them just because you're your son. Amen. But if your daughter, if your daddy is the king, I mean, you ain't even got to say that. A lot of times, you just walk the street, folks just be getting out of the way. Man, you ain't even said nothing. Because the authority of the king is, is allocated to the son. Even if it's not officially allocated, you know, I ain't going to mess with you and, and your daddy's the king. Your daddy is putting people in the gallows and feeding them to lions and stuff all the time. I ain't going to mess with you. And we have an authority because our Father is God. Yeah. Amen. The Spirit that witness with my spirit that I'm a son of God. Yeah. I'm reminded every day by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, that I am a child of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 And if a child ain't my heir, 
heir of God and joint heir with Jesus Christ. So, for those of us that have received the word of God, now, make no mistake, this ain't everybody, because some people continue to reject the word of God. They continue to run from it. They continue to live their own life. And say, I don't want no part of that. I don't want Jesus, because I got a boyfriend, and I don't want to lose it. And I, got, I got a girlfriend, I don't want to give her up. Uh, I got this going on in my life, and I don't want to turn away from it. So people reject Christ because there's something in the world that they want. Amen. Yeah. The scripture says, uh, Jesus delighted the world. He came into his own, and his own received him not. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And some people love the darkness in their lives so they don't come to Christ because if you come to Christ, then you know Amen. it's going to get addressed. Yeah. It's going to get dealt with. Yeah. Amen. So there's an authority that we have as, as believers. Uh, in Luke 10, 19, Jesus told them, to Behold, I give you power. Authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And then in Ephesians 1 and 22, this is backed up in Ephesians 1 and 22, where it says, And have put all things under his feet. Now, now who is who is he? He is the word made flesh. So all things are under the authority of the word of God. The word of God is in charge of everything. The Bible says the world's were framed by the word of God. Amen. So, so you can see the authority of the word, which is the same authority that Christ gave those that believe in him, those that follow him. Now remember, the devil has come down having great wrath because he you know his time is short. Remember that your adversary, the devil, both about as a royal lion, seeking whom he may divide. And remember that the thief is coming but to steal, kill, and destroy. And there are too many church folk that have not yet realized that they are in a war. Yeah. It's a fight, y'all. Yeah. You have to fight for everything. everything. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt to go to the land that was promised to them, they had to fight. <laughs> and they weren't ready for the fight. And that's why after they arrived at the promised land, at the gate of the promised land, in eight days, because of their unbelief, they had to spend 40 years in the wilderness to all of the unbelieving grandmas and grandpas and mom and daddy who were scared. All of them had to die out. And the children were allowed to go on into the promised land 40 years later. Now they're grown. Now they're in charge. And now God is ready to. Because they provoke him. Unbelief provokes God. Yeah. Yeah. Not willing to take God at his word. That provokes him. Yeah. Not realizing the authority. Of the king. And his son. That could get you in big trouble. Yeah. You know. Amen. If the king makes a decree. Then you got to say that. You got to be yeah, That's right. That's right. Because that's what you can be in trouble. And God is all powerful, all sovereign, has providence over every event, every single thing that goes on in life, yeah. in the universe, in existence. He has divine providence over it. A bird can't fall out of a tree unless God authorizes it. Little sparrow, he can't fall. Without God allowing it or authorizing it. Yeah. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that we have knowledge of. Everybody don't have that knowledge, but we have that knowledge. Amen. So there's no excuse for us. Amen. There's no excuse for us not taking God at His word. He Amen. loves it. He loves it when you take Him at His word. Amen. Remember the centurion said, Lord, you don't have to come to my house to heal my servant. Just speak the word. Yes. And if you speak the word, I'll be satisfied that it's done. Glory. Oh, what if the people of God, what if church folks, what if God's folk would look at God's word that way and say, Lord, if I, if 
I see it written in the Bible, it's mine. If I see it written in the Bible, I'm going to claim it. Yeah. Amen. So with that kind of attitude and faith towards the word of God, when the enemy come, amen, when the, when the, when the enemy come down having great wrath, when the enemy come back around as a roaring lion, when the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy, when you have that kind of faith in the word of God, then you can fight and win. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. When you have that attitude towards the word of God, then you can win. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Ooh. Christ was always impressed when someone took him at his word. You know, some folk he had to mix and spit with, with mud, and some folk he had to wash him in the pool, and other folk, you know, all different kinds of things. You know, and that's, and that's why sometimes you go to services and they run and walk around the church and tell them to turn around seven times and that's because folk don't want to take God at his word. Why do I need a word from the prophet if I'm taking God at his word? If I take God at his word, I don't need to get in the prophet's mind to be prophesied to. Because I got it all. I already got it all. Anything you got that's outside of this ain't for me. So what you got that's different from what I already have. I don't need no prophecy. Keep on prophesying. Don't expect me to need what you said. Because that's basically a lot of them all said in it. Yeah, but that's a whole other sermon right there. Amen. When he called his disciples together in Luke 9, beginning of verse 1, when he called them together, he said to them, I give you power. And authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Amen. That's what he that's what he did for them. And what we have to recognize is if he empowered his disciples like that before they even had the Holy Ghost. Come on, did nobody have the Holy Ghost in Luke chapter nine? Holy Ghost came in Acts. That's a few episodes later. And we got the Holy Ghost and we love God and we know He loves us and we believe in Him and we trust Him. Why not just take His word? He said, Behold, I give unto you power. Yeah. Amen. So why don't we lay claim over everything? I want what's coming to me. I want what's mine. I want what belongs to me. I'm not trying to usurp authority. I'm not trying to claim anything. That God didn't say I could have, but if God said I can have it, then I want it. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know, and, and, and where the scripture says He had put all things under His feet, He went on to say, Who is the head of the body, the church. So if He's the head, the feet is on the body. Yeah. Go ahead. So it's all under the church's feet. Cause there ain't no feet attached to yeah. Go ahead. Come on, y'all. That's simple biology right there. That's anatomy. You can look at your own body and see that the head is up here. Yeah. And the feet down there. Yeah. So so what God is telling me through the word is saving you under our feet. You're under our feet. That's where you are. You're under our feet. We're the church. We're the body. And you're under our feet. You are rebellious and and going rogue and all out of your place and doing things that you don't have the authority to do. It's because the saints are not keeping watch and letting the devil run free. Hither, thither, willy, nilly, all over the place. And ain't nobody putting the devil in. Here's the word of God saying that you need to be under it, not over it. If the word says I'm healed, then Satan, are we trying to make me sick? Because you're out of order. If the word says that I have prosperity, then don't be trying to make me broke all the time. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be broke. I am not going to be broke all the time. I'm not going to let that happen. There are some 
things I can do. That's been given to me to prosper and be in health. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Even as my soul prospers. So that, that speaks to the requirement or the prerequisite of a relationship. See, my soul has to be prospered in Christ. Yes. And all that can happen is that I've been born again yes. and I have a relationship with him. See, a lot of people refuse to join church because they really don't know what the church is. A lot of people refuse to get saved because they don't know what that means. And I know, like me, a lot of you said, after you finally got saved, truly saved, you said, if I had known it was like this, I would have got saved a long time ago. If I, I didn't know it was like this. The church folk had me confused. I heard one brother ask me, what do they do in there? They just pray all the time. You're supposed to just don't understand the kingdom of God. Well, let's face it, there's some folk in the church that don't understand the kingdom of God. So, so I'm declaring war. That's what I'm going to do. I hope you'll do it too. It's time to fight back. You know, it's, you know what? You can go to heaven. You go to heaven sick. You go to heaven poor. You go to heaven. I mean, you know, all these things, all this pressure that comes against us and come on us, and and we don't fight, and therefore we bear the burden of it. You still go to heaven because if you've been born again and you say, then the grace of God is going to get you in heaven. Amen. Amen. But. At the same time, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and more abundantly. And there were many of his promises that he said in this world and in the world to come. You're going to be rewarded in this world and in the world to come. So I'm at the point now where I'm looking for my rewards. Huh? You know, I want to go to heaven and I know everything will be all right when I get there. That's going to, oh, that's going to be the finish line right there. When I get there, you know, ain't nobody going to be able to put me out. I can't. Once you get to heaven, you can't backslide no more. Amen. Some of y'all backslide three, four times when you really got, you know, <laughs> or it really took root. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it just took a little bit more for you. You know, people have to keep baptizing you over and over and over. They, you know, and so, so like they said, we're tired of going down in that river. And baptizing you, and you, and you're gonna be right back three months from now, and we gotta baptize you again. You see, so, so, but that's that. That's just the way it is with some folk. But it don't have to be like that. That's not the plan. That's that. The plan is that everything should be under the church's feet. And a lot of times we miss out because we're so divided. If we See, see, it says it's under the feet of the body. You notice when it said, I put all things under his feet, which is the head of the body, he didn't call no names. Yeah. He didn't say, you know, it's so and so, apostle so and so, bishop so and so. He said, under the body, the body. Not one of the bodies, not some of the bodies, the body, one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. If we were more unified as a church yeah. and didn't have the, all these issues, man, we got some issues. We got doctrinal issues, racial issues, ethnic issues, and you know, a lot of folks can study the Bible no way and they're still arguing. <laughs> arguing the Bible ain't even studying. They just want to be in the argument. You see? And, and, and so we have been so divided, but here's what Jesus said when Brady said this. He said two or three. Yes. Amen. So you can't use the rest of them as an excuse. Find you somebody that can believe with you. Somebody that's willing to take God at his word. Amen. You can do all you can by yourself, but every now and then you got to grab somebody and say, hey, you can come over here. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's, let's look at this scripture together. And now let's pray about it. Yeah. Let's see if we can't get God 
God to do what he promised in the scripture. Amen. So, so, so not declaring war. This, this thing's war. And, and here's how we fight. Not the carnal weapons. And, you know, we got a lot of traditions that we brought from 1970. You know. You know, we don't, we, sometimes we don't even know how to rebuke the devil. You know, some, some folks talk about casting out there. They don't even know how to rebuke the devil. They, you know, but, but, but we, we, we know what the word, when you know the word, you know when Satan is trying to do something that he don't have the authority to do. Yes, yes. And sometimes all you simply need to do is acknowledge, Satan, I see what you're trying to do. And I'm here to tell you, you ain't got that authority. Hallelujah. You ain't got the authority to keep me broke. You ain't got the authority to keep me sick. Now you might throw something on me. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous. Wait, wait, wait. But the Lord. But the Lord. Deliver them from how many? How many is he going to deliver me from? How many sickness and diseases is the Lord going to deliver me from? He's going to deliver me from them all. All of them. Lord. So everywhere the enemy is trying to exceed his authority when it comes to the people of God, we have been empowered. We have the authority to put him in his place. And what would, what would you do if you don't speak up? Amen. I remember when I was coming up in a, in a bad neighborhood and I just didn't have no fight in me. People used to beat me every day. Take everything I had, money, buy stuff. I couldn't keep nothing. They take it all. They didn't wait for me to get something. So they can take it. Amen. Until I made up my mind, I'm going to fight back. I'm not fighting necessarily to win. I'm just fighting to let you know that I'm not going to take it anymore. And that's what we got to do to the devil because listen, you don't have to fight the devil to win. Jesus has already gotten the victory. You don't need the victory. You just need to fight. You just need to get in there. That's, what, that's where the Jews, the Hebrews messed up when they came out of Egypt. That's where they messed up. They saw the giants and said, we can't beat them giants. You don't need to beat them. All you need to do is have the faith to go in there and take what God said was yours. And yeah, that's what that's what I'm declaring, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be taking myself, I'm gonna be taking my healing, I'm gonna be taking my prosperity. Everything that God said that I'm supposed to have, everything that is on the level of his word, then the enemy can't get outside. I'm not going to let him get outside of it. I'm talking about for me. Now, whether or not you want to fight it for you, that's up to you. How you want to handle that. I mean, I'm willing to help you. You know, we, we gave up on it. That's, that's okay. That's, that's acceptable. It's okay. We gave up on it. Amen. We supposed to be a game anyway. I said, we supposed to be a game anyway. We supposed to be more gang than any gang in this country. Yeah. Amen. So, so we, you know, one can put a thousand to fight, two can put ten thousand to fight. That's telling you right now, we need to work together. Yeah. That's telling you right now, we, we are gang. Yeah. We need to get some gang warfare going on. You see what I'm saying? Amen. So I'm declaring war against all evil Amen. that would come against my life. You know, sometimes we have habits, and sometimes you know, those habits become strongholds. Yeah. And you have to fight it. If you get a stronghold in your life, you have to fight. Amen. You have to fight. You just can't get in folks' prayer lines. And sometimes you can get in a prayer line, and sometimes it will help. Sometimes it will work. But you've got to have some fight in you. Amen. Because he's our personal Savior. Yes. You know, he's, he's in you. Yes. He's not 
in the group. He said each individual in the group. So you have to put up some fight. You have to say, I don't want this in my life. You have to say, I don't want to continue like this. I don't want this thing to keep you in the best of me. You have to include that in your prayer. Stop praying for cars and houses and land and say, Lord, get this devil out of my life. Show me how to get this devil out of my life. Show me how to break this habit. Show me how to get over this because my flesh loves it and my flesh keeps clinging for it and I want to break this habit. I want to break this bondage. And the Holy Ghost will reveal to you and let you know the devil don't have the authority to put you in that kind of bondage. Amen. I have declared you to be free. Amen. He said that we preach deliverance to the captives. So I'm declaring war on sin and even pardon and sickness and bondage. The devil can't have my health and prosperity, can't have my stuff. And as I close, I want to pray with you. I say with you, not just for you, I want to pray with you because you got some responsibility in this matter. Amen. 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 There's something you have to do. Bow your heads with me. I want you to open your mouth. Talk to God. If you don't want to say it out loud, you still need to say it. So let's let's talk. Let's talk to God. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you feel more comfortable being seated, then that's fine. But I want you to talk to God from your heart. Even if you don't make it audible, talk to God about what's going on in your life. And just let the Lord know that you don't want to take it. Lord, I don't want to take it anymore. I don't want this pressure anymore. I want deliverance. I want freedom. I want healing. I want prosperity. I want your will to be fulfilled. All the promises that you made, I want them to be fulfilled in my life, in the lives of those that believe upon you, and in the lives of those that are calling upon you. Father, let it be manifested. Amen. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the image of God, let it shine in our hearts and open up the eyes of our understanding so that we can comprehend with all the saints the depth, the length, the width and to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge. Thank you for it. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a